Shalom, Shalom. Happy Sabbath to all Israel. And um, I want to say all praises to the Most High God only. Um, welcome to another Bible study lesson. And this is Brother Yoel from the Israelite Bible study group. Um, Today's Bible study lesson is going to be called The Most High God is Israel's Only Savior. Okay? The Most High God is Israel's Only Savior, not Jesus. Okay? Just want to make sure you be clear on that. It's not Jesus. He ain't nothing. So, don't give the Most High's glory, his honor, his praise, or anything like that to Jesus or to anyone other than the Most High God. The Most High God of Israel said, My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. He said that in um, Isaiah. So listen up, Israel. We need to put all of our trust in the Most High, our God. He is our only Savior. He is the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we, we don't trust in Jesus Christ or Lucifer or whatever other name that they call him, even when they make him black, okay? We still don't trust in him. Because the black people, so-called black people, have changed Jesus' uh, color from white to black. And they have changed his name to be a more Hebrew-sounding name um, from the name that he, you know, from the name Jesus, which is a Latin name or Greek or whatever, right? So... They have changed his color from white to black, and they changed his, his name to sound more like a Hebrew name. However, we still don't trust in him. We don't even trust in the black one, okay? Jesus Christ is the nation's God. He is Lucifer. He is Baal. He is the savior of the world of the Gentiles. He is the Gentiles' savior. That is why he commissioned, you know, or the Christians, the Gentiles and the Christians and, and everybody else. That's why he commissioned his uh, followers uh, to preach to all the creatures of the world. Okay? To all the creatures of the world. So let's not waste no time. Let's let's document that and let's get into it. Let's start off in Mark chapter 16 and let's pick it up in verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Do you hear that? Every creature. But the most high God of Israel, the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is not about saving all the world and every creature. So you see right here that Jesus Christ have nothing to do with the children of Israel. And we, the children of Israel, are, are not to have anything to do with him. Okay, let's go to Amos chapter 3 and verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Most High God is only coming to save Israel, not the whole world, not all the creatures in the world. Okay, no, only Israel. So if you are serving Jesus Christ and you look into him to be your savior, 
then you are not a, a, a Hebrew Israelite. You are a Christian. You are a Gentile. And Jesus is, is your Savior. Okay? And, uh, and the Most High is going to destroy you. Psalms 147 and verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. Unto who? Unto Israel. Okay? To Israel, not to the world, not to Christians, not to Gentiles, not to Jesus. Not to Lucifer, but to Israel only. Okay? And read that again. Psalms 147 and verse 19. He showeth his, his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Verse 20. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Okay. All praises to the Most High God of Israel. The Most High's love for Israel. Let's get that. Let's get the Most High's love for Israel. So you'll see that he only loved Israel. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord, yet I loved you. Yet I loved Jacob. I'm sorry. Yet I loved Jacob. Verse 3. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 3. And I hated Esau. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. You see that right here, that the Most High God loved Israel. Okay? And that's who he's coming to save. Israel. He's our only Savior. Okay? So we don't look to another to save us. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And let's pick it up in verse 6. We're continuing with understanding that the Most High God loved his people, Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Are you hearing this? Verse 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For ye were, ye were the fewest of all people. Verse 8, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, has the Lord brought you out. With a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the hand, out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Okay? Right there, you can see the Most High God loved Israel. Let's go back to Malachi chapter, chapter 4 this time. Let's pick it up in chapter 4 and let's get verse 4 because... We're going to see that the Most High God is, uh, you know, want us to remember this. He want us to remember that um, the laws that he gave to Moses, okay? And live by those things. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb. For all Israel, for, for, for who? For all Israel, not for the Christians, Gentiles, and other people in the world. No, for all Israel. 
with the statutes and the judgments. So the Most High God said, remember the law of Moses. And notice he did not say anything about remembering the words of Jesus or a.k.a. Lucifer. He didn't say anything about remembering what, what, what they say, what he say, what, what Jesus, a.k.a. Lucifer say. We don't have to remember nothing that Jesus Christ said. Why? Because we have, he have nothing to do with us and we have nothing to do with him. And the most high God have nothing to do with him. The Christians and the Gentiles are the world, uh, uh, you know, those, I'm sorry, those that are in the world can remember what he said because he is their God with a little g, okay? But the most high God is our God and he is our Savior and he's our Lord, the most high God, okay? Not Jesus. Jesus ain't nothing to us, okay? Nothing. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. The children of Israel are not consumed because the Most High God don't change. So he loved us then and he still love us right now to this day. And we are to seek him and serve him. And, and don't even look at those other stupid gods out there, okay? Malachi chapter 3 and verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. So remember the laws of Moses, okay? And live by those things. The, 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 the Lucifer, a.k.a. Christ Jesus in, in the New Testament, they tell you that the laws are done away with. Don't even worry about it. Don't even look at those things. So I'm telling you here, don't look at them. Remember the laws of Moses. That's what the Most High God is telling us. So if you are a true Israelite, you need to be looking at Remembering the laws of Moses and, and the hell with those other, that other stuff, okay? Jesus and all of that garbage, okay? Let's go back to Malachi real quick. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah. Who? Elijah. Not Jesus? No. Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great day, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. See, this is what we need to be focusing on. The fact that the Most High God said he will send us Elijah before he comes. And Elijah is going to, uh, you know, turn us back, our hearts back to serving the Most High God. Getting us ready and prepared for the Most High to come and deliver us and save us. Because like I said, He, the Most High God, is our only Savior. The Most High God said that He is going to send Elijah the prophet. The Most High didn't say anything about sending Jesus, a.k.a. Lucifer or anybody like that. So why would anybody look to Jesus for salvation? We're supposed to be looking for Elijah to come. And he's going to prepare us to receive the Most High God when the Most High God comes and deliver us, okay? And let's document that the Most High God is our only Savior. Let's go back and look at when our people, you know, had to cross over, cross through the Red Sea, okay? Let's document that, and then you'll see that it's the Most High God who was always there for us, not Jesus. Jesus is nowhere in the picture, and he shouldn't be in the picture even now. 
throw his throw his behind out of the picture, okay? If he's in your picture. Uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 14 and let's pick it up in verse number one. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Pahirath between Migdol and the sea over against Baal Zephon before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Okay, the Most High God was orchestrating this whole entire thing. Okay, he was putting everything together. Watch this. Verse 3, Exodus 14 and verse 3. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land and the wilderness has shut them in. Verse 4. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. You see that? The Most High God is putting it in Pharaoh's mind to, to, to come and chase after the children of Israel. Again, the Most High God is making him do it. I hope you can see this. Verse 4. And I, the Most High God, will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. The Most High God is making him do it. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord and they did so. Okay. The Most High God is in total control of this earth. So that's why I want to encourage our people today that that um, with all of the stuff that you see going on, don't even worry about it. Just focus on, 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 on the Most High God and doing what he, he tell us to do to the best of your ability. And don't worry about all this coronavirus and the vaccines and the, these, these uh, presidents and all of that. Just don't worry about all of that garbage, okay? Just focus on the Most High God because he is going to deliver us. He is going to save us and he's going to destroy these people. Everything that they do, they don't even realize it's the Most High God who's putting it in their mind to do what they do. The Most High God is in total control. So just as our ancestors felt at this time, at that very moment, they felt like they, they are shut in. You know, they felt like they were cornered. In, 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 in their enemy's land with nowhere to go because Pharaoh and his army is vastly approaching and the Red Sea was in front of them so they couldn't run. You know, if they ran, they would run right into the Red Sea. So it is just, you know, just the way they felt then is the way we feel today, okay? And uh, it, it felt like a hopeless situation. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, even with us, you know, being in our enemy's land and all of that stuff, it feels like a hopeless situation. All of this stuff is going on and, and, and you know, what do we do? Where do we go? We're in our enemy's land. We can't do nothing. We're in bondage. We're in captivity. We're not in uh, heavy bond, but we're in captivity, though. We can't just go and move and do what we want to do or what we need to do. We can't get out of this land. We, we're trapped here, okay? And um, so we felt, just like we do today, you know, they felt like that at that time. And we, as Israelites today, are faced with a very similar situation in this new Egypt okay we are in the land of our enemies where so much has happened so much is going on okay many of our peoples 
um, blood was shed in this very land, on the soil of this land, okay? Our people were brought here as slaves. Our people were hung on, from the trees in this land. Our people were beaten, burnt to death in this land, brutalized, beaten, shot, murdered by police in this land, okay? All of that, mistreated, ill-treated, or whatever you want to call it. And so many other things have happened to us on this land, on this soil. So yeah, we want to get out of here. We want to go to our land. And, and there's nobody who's going to take us there except the Most High God. He is our only Savior. That's why we say, that's why I say, don't even look to no Jesus. Jesus ain't did nothing for nobody. He ain't saved nobody and never will save nobody. Okay? All broken, uh, uh, empty promises. Garbage, man. We look to the Most High God. He's going to save us. Okay? And, you know, we feel like we are boxed in. We feel like we're cornered. We're shut in. You know, our enemies are still ruling over us. We have no rights here. We have no might. We have no strength to defend ourselves against those who rule over us. So it can definitely feel like a hopeless situation as you know, as our, as our forefathers felt when they were boxed in with the Red Sea right in front of them and the army of, uh, you know, Pharaoh and his army just charging after them. They had no, they couldn't go nowhere. We're in that same situation. So, um, but I want you to know that you have nothing to fear. Because the Most High, our God, not Jesus, but the Most High, our God, the God of, of, of Israel, okay? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is our God. And he is in total control over the entire situation. And he is going to save us just like he saved our forefathers. He was controlling the whole situation, even though they didn't realize it. Okay. They didn't know it either. Just like we, we, you know, we don't know it. But the Most High is in control of the entire situation. We have nothing to worry about. Okay. Let's continue. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 5. And it was told the king of Pharaoh that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people because the Most High God was doing it. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? Verse six. And he said, I mean, and he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Verse seven. And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt how many of the chariots of Egypt all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them verse 8 and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh so the Most High God was in total control of this thing letting you know that the Most High, our God, was, like I said, in total control over the entire thing. He manipulated the entire uh, situation, including the eventual outcome. Okay? And, he, and, and th that's why the Most High was able to tell Abraham years before this stuff ever even happened, that it was going to happen and it happened exactly as the Most High said it was going to happen when he said, know for surety your people 
your, your seed will be in the strangers in the land that is not theirs and they will be afflicted for 400 years and everything that the Most High God told Abraham, it happened. And you seeing it playing out right here. And, and just as the Most High God said, he's going to deliver us, he's going to do it. You got to understand that he is in total control of the situation, okay? He is, he is letting everything happen. He put Donald Trump, he put... Uh, uh, Bynum or whatever that man named president name is he put these people in their positions even though they don't know it they think that they doing it but the most high God is the one who is in total control this earth is his place and nobody can do anything on their own the most high God is moving all the parts and pieces and everything okay and he told Abraham that all of all of this was going to happen okay way before any of it actually happened so the most high god manipulated the thing himself the entire thing himself so we have like i said nothing to worry about take a deep breath israel relax you have nothing to worry about the most high god is your only savior exodus Chapter 14 and verse 8. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. And I'm going to read that again. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. Verse 4. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh. And his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Pihirath before Baal Zephon. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore has thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Verse 12. Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? Didn't we tell you that, Moses? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians and live, that's what they're trying to say, than that we should die in this wilderness. Verse 14, and Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. And I want to say that to our people right now. Fear ye not. Okay. Stand still. Wait. Wait on the Most High God. Children of Israel, wait on the Most High God and watch what he do. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Most High, our God. You're going to see it. This is what I want to encourage our people with today. Okay? Stand still. Wait on the Most High. Okay? Don't wait on Jesus. No, I ain't say wait on Jesus. Jesus ain't the most high. Forget about Jesus. Wait on the most high, our God, not Jesus. Wait on the most high, our God. And you are going to see his salvation. He is going to save you. Because he is our only savior. And no one else can save us. Only the most high God can, can save us or capable of saving us okay he is the one who brought us here in the first place he is the one who sent the the uh, the, the uh, our enemies all the way over into uh africa where, where he brought us from sent them into first he sent them into jerusalem to chase us out of there then he sent us 
Then he sent the enemies over there to gather us. Then he brought us here and, and, and you know, spread us throughout the four corners of the earth. And now he is going to, he is the one that's going to deliver us back into our land. So we have nothing to worry about. Let's get verse 13 again. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show unto you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more for Ever. Verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you. Who going to fight for us? The Lord, the most high God shall fight for us. The Lord shall fight for you. And ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel. That they go forward. Verse 16. But lift thou up thy rod. And stretch out thy hand. Over the sea. And divide it. And the children of Israel. Shall go on. Dry ground. Through the midst of the sea. Verse 17. And I. Behold I. Singular. I. Will harden the hearts of Pharaoh and they shall follow them and I the most high God will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host upon his chariots and upon his horsemen verse 18 and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten the honor and Pharaoh, upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, upon his horsemen. Are you seeing this? Do you see how the Most High God does things? Okay. Verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar, and, and, and the pillar, I mean, and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them verse 20 exodus 14 and verse 20 and it came and it came between the camp of the egyptians and the camp of israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these so that one can one came not near the other all the night. Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the, the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. Verse 22. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were, were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Verse 23, Exodus 14 and 23. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Verse 24. And it came to pass that in the morning, with, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the, the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Verse 25, and took off their chariot wheels, wow, that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, let us flee 
from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. Verse 26, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. Wow, what the Most High did to that army. Verse 27, you're going to do the same thing to the armies and the people in, this, in, in these days, okay? He's going to do the same thing when he deliver our people. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 27. So I hope you are encouraged, Israel. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned at, to his strength when the, when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Verse 28, and the warders returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came unto the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. And he going to do the same thing to all of these lands that took us in captivity. All of y'all, not one of y'all going to be remain. You're going to pay for what you have done to the children of Israel. And Israel need to be encouraged that the Most High God is going to do this, okay? Exodus chapter 14 and verse 29. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel. He did what? He saved Israel. Who did it? The Most High God, the Lord, saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead. They did what? They saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And same thing, we're going to see these, our enemies, dead. We're going to see it. The Most High, our God, is going to do the same thing to this new Egypt. And to every place where our people, the children of Israel, were in bondage and captivity and were mistreated and were beaten and was killed and was shot by police and all of that stuff. He's going to do the same thing to these lands that did that to us. And we are going to see them dead. And we're going to be saved. And we're going to walk, walk right through to our land. And Most High is going to bring us right back to our land. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. And then they sung, you know, after all that, they sung a song, okay, which is known as the song of Moses. And we need to Learn this song, okay? You and I, children of Israel, my, my family, my brothers and sisters, we need to learn this song. Why? Because we are going to be singing this song again. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. And that is a beautiful song. That sounds so beautiful. Can't wait to sing it, okay? He has thrown them, the horse and his rider, our enemies. He threw them right into the sea, drowned their behinds. Okay. The Lord is my strength. Verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song. 
He has become my salvation. He's become what? My salvation. He's become what? My salvation. He is my God. Not Jesus. The most high God is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God. And I will exalt him. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. So Israel. Wait. Israel, wait on the Most High, our God, okay? Not Jesus, aka Lucifer. Don't wait on him. Wait on the Most High, our God. Don't be, don't be uh, hasty, okay? Wait upon him. Stay humble. Don't be frightened by all the garbage that's going on around you because the Most High God is in total control, okay? Wait on him. Because, um, like I said, Jesus had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with us. He is the Christian's God, okay? He is the nation's God. He is the Gentile's God, but he had nothing to do with us. If you are a Christian and you're hearing this video, go and serve your God, okay? You have nothing to do with us. They taught you in your, you know, in your church that the Old Testament is done away with. So don't even worry about this. It has nothing to do with you. You don't even have to come on this page, actually. Okay? Hosea, chapter 13, and verse 4. Yet I am the Lord, thy God, from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. For there is no savior. There is no what? There is no savior. There is no what? There is no savior beside me. Are you hearing this? The most high God is our only savior. The most high God is the savior of Israel. We are his portion. And it angers the most high God. OK, it angers our our father when his children go after strange gods like Jesus Christ, a.k.a. Lucifer. If you if you uh, go after uh, Jesus Christ, you are making the most high God angry. If you praying to Jesus Christ and waiting for him to die for you and all that garbage, you are making the most high God very angry with you. He's going to destroy you. He's going to punish you. you. You're going to have to deal with the most high God going to deal with you. OK, he's going to judge you for that. Deuteronomy 32 in verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With what? Strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. You hear that? Verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils. So what are devils? He, he said they sacrificed the devil. So what are what are these devils? These devils that he's talking about are statues. OK, they used to build statues out of wood and stone and stuff like that and just sacrifice their kids and everything to them. OK, put fire inside the statue and put the and throw their kids in there and let them get all burnt up. That's what the devil that he's talking about. Not no spirit beings flying all over the place and all that. It was just statues that they made. They made when you make a statue, a little guy out of a statue, it's called the devil. OK. So what are these devils? They are statues that are Im immovable. They can't breathe. They can't walk. They can't eat. They can't move. OK. It can't move at all because it is just a dumb idol, okay? That's all it is that they made with their own hands, okay? And it is the same thing today because nobody have seen Jesus Christ, okay? It is just an image that they made, you know, some some man paint it, and uh, and then they just make statues out of it, and 
and little gods and little, little I mean, little uh, devils out of it. And they put it, pictures on, you know, print pictures on his shirts and all of that stuff. Nobody has seen, seen him. It is just, like I said, an image that somebody painted. And they make statues out of it, out of that image. And they make devils out of that image. And they sacrifice to that image, even today. And the thing um, that they made has nothing to do with the Most High God. That thing is, is, is uh, you know, they call it Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with the Most High God. Okay? And that thing is not our Savior. The Most High God is our Savior. Okay? I'm going to read verse 17 again. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils and not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up. Whom your fathers feared not. So none of our forefathers knew anything about this Jesus Christ. A.K.A. Uh, Lucifer or whatever the other names that they call him. None of our forefathers knew anything about him, okay? They didn't know nothing about this character. He is a new God that has come newly up. That's why when you do a Google search and type in the name Jesus Christ and you look in the Old Testament, it's going to say, you know, there's no, no matches for that name because our forefathers know nothing about him. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 17. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Verse 18. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful. So you unmindful of the Most High and you serving this new God. You are unmindful and has forgotten God you have done what? You have forgotten God that formed thee. Okay? Let's go to Psalms 106 and verse 21. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. And we just read what the great thing the Most High did in Egypt. Verse 22. Wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. He drowned them suckers. Verse 23, therefore, he said that he would destroy them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. The Most High God was going to destroy our people for, you know, for, um, for after all that the Most High did, they're going to still try to, uh, you know, complain about him and, and not follow him and stuff. So, Israel, wait upon the Most High, our God. Wait upon the Most High, your God, okay? Wait upon him because he is going to deliver us. He is going to gather us. Not Jesus. Jesus had nothing to do with us. He's not going to gather you. He ain't saving you. Those are all lies in the New Testament that they say. Okay? The Most High, our God alone, is going to save us. Okay? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 32. Let's pick it up in verse 37. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whether I have driven them in my anger and in my fury and in the great wrath I will bring them again unto this place and I will cause them to dwell safely do you hear that verse 38 and they shall be my people and I will be their God Verse 39, Jeremiah 32 and verse 39. And I will give them one heart and one way and that they may fear me for 
forever. For how long? Forever. For the, for the good of them and of their children after them. Verse 40. And I will make an everlasting covenant. A what? An everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. So we're not going to depart from the Most High again because he's going to put his fear in our hearts this time. Okay. Verse 41. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. All praises to the Most High. For thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring up upon them all the good that I have promised them. Israel, please wait on the Most High God. If you hear this, if the Most High God is speaking to you, you hear this, wait upon him. X, um, let's go to uh, Ezekiel. Okay, Ezekiel, I was about to say Exodus, but I meant Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether I had, whether ye went, okay? So the Most High God said he's going to do it for his name's sake. He's going to deliver us. So it is a sure thing, okay? Verse 23, And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathens, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know, just like he did with the Egyptians, the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall sanctify you, house of Israel, children of Israel, before their eyes. Verse 24, for I will take you from among the heathen and gather you. I will do what? Gather you out of all countries. So stop letting these, these uh, people tell you you got to gather yourself out of the country and all that stuff. The Most High God said, I will do it. for." He said he's going to do it for his own name's sake. Let's read 24 again. Or no, let's read yeah, 24 again. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. So we're coming up out of this land, the land of our enemies, where they have uh, shed the blood of our people all over this place. We're coming out of here. You know, we're coming out of here. We want to get out of here. Okay, can't wait to get out of here. Ezekiel 36 and verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, like Jesus Christ, an idol. Will I cleanse you? Verse 26. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take Away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. All praises to the Most High God of Israel. I will put my spirit in you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Not say that they're done away with, but do them. 
Ezekiel 36 and verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. That's awesome. That is awesome. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Trust in the Lord. Trust in who? Trust in the Lord, the Most High, our God, the God of Israel, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham. Okay? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. If you don't understand this, then just trust in the Most High God. Don't lean to your own understanding. Okay? In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. Okay. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. Okay. Let's continue. We got a little more to go. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29. And let's pick it up in verse 10. For thus saith the Lord. That after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon. And so this 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 is letting you know how the most high deal with because he said he don't change okay so just as he did here he's going to do for us again okay but i want us to document this okay jeremiah 29 and verse 10 thus saith the lord that after 70 years be accomplished at babylon i will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I, that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me. Not to Jesus. Not to no no idol not to no fake false god then ye shall call upon me the most high god he's saying and ye shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken unto you verse 13 and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart verse 14 and I will be found of you, saith the, the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whether I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again unto the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Let's go to Psalms. Chapter 62. Let's pick it up in verse 1. Tur truly, my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. From him cometh what? My salvation. The Most High. Our salvation comes from who? The Most High God. From him cometh my salvation. Verse 2. He only, only the Most High God. He only, not Jesus, he only, only the Most High God is my rock and my salvation. Only the Most High God is my rock and my salvation. Only the Most High God is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Let's skip down to verse 5. Psalm 62 and verse 5. My soul, wait thou upon God, for my expectation is from him. Verse 6. He only, say that again. He only, the Most High God only, okay? He only is my rock and my salvation. So only the Most High is our Savior and our salvation and our rock. Not Jesus Christ. 
He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Verse 7. And God is my salvation. And who? And the most high God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Verse 8. Psalm 62 and verse 8. Trust in him at all times. Ye people, ye children of Israel, trust in him at all times, ye people, and pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. He is our savior, Selah. Okay? The Most High God is Israel's only Savior. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. The Most High God is our Redeemer. I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Okay? We are the most high gods. We're not, we're not Jesus, Jesus Christ, a.k.a. Lucifer uh, uh, people. We have nothing to do with him. He has nothing to do with us. Okay? Thou art mine, the most high God said. Verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they sh through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Verse 3. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel. Thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thee. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou, verse 4, since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, Will I give men for thee and people for thy life? Okay. Most high God is awesome. Fear not, for I am with thee. So we, we have nothing to fear. Relax. Take your ease. Don't even worry about it. Because the most high God said, What? Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thee, bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Wow. Verse 6. Isaiah 43 and verse 6. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, Israel, the children of Israel, everyone that is called by my name, Christians ain't called by the name of the Most High God. Israel is called by the name of the Most High God. Okay? Everyone that is called by my name, Gentiles are not called by the name of the Most High God. The children of Israel are called by the name of the Most High God. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. And also... Uh, Jesus ain't got nothing to do with the Most High God. That's not called by the Most High God. The Most High God ain't called Jesus. Okay. Isaiah 43 and verse 10. 
Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. There was no God formed. Okay. Verse 11. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, other than the Most High God, there is no Savior. The Most High God is our only Savior. Okay. He is Israel's only Savior. Who can understand this? Who can hear this? Who can see this? Isaiah 43 and verse 12. I have declared and have saved and I have showed thee when there was no strange God like Jesus Christ, a.k.a. Lucifer, among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Yes, Father, we know that and we appreciate that and we love you and we can't wait. I mean, we're waiting, but we, we are excited to know that you have opened our eyes to see that it is you and you alone, Father. We thank you. All praises to the Most High God. Isaiah 43 and verse 13. Yea, before the day was, I am he. That means before time and everything, the Most High God is the one. He was there. He, there is no beginning and end with him. Okay. Yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Okay. The Most High God calls our people to, to be scattered. So nobody can deliver us and bring us out of this scattering. It's the Most High God who can bring us back. Okay. I will work. And who will let it? Who going to tell the Most High God what to do? Nobody. Who can stop him? Who can deliver out of his hand? Who can do anything if the if Most High God don't order it? Nobody can do nothing. The Most High God is in total control. I don't care what it seemed like. I'm letting you know here that the Most High God is in total control. We have nothing to worry about. Let's skip down to, uh, well, no, let's not skip down. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 45, okay? Isaiah 45, and we're going to pick it up in verse 15. Verily, thou art a God that hideth thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. Who is thy Savior? O God of Israel. The Savior, the only Savior of Israel. Verse 16. They shall be ashamed and confounded. All of them that shall go. All. Um, let me read that again. Isaiah 45 and verse 16. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them. They shall go to confusion together. That are makers of idols. Okay. Jesus Christ is an idol. Verse 17. But Israel shall be saved. Israel shall be what? Saved. Who's going to do it? In the Lord. So the most high God is going to save Israel. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So we're going to live in a world that will never end because this world, this current world that we live in is going to end. OK, but we're going we're going to live in a world that will never end when the Most High God deliver us. So that's why I'm urging you to wait upon the Most High God. Don't go after no idol. Don't go after Jesus Christ. It's an idol. Nobody has seen him. It's a lie. Okay? Nobody has seen him. It's just an idol. Isaiah 45 and verse 18. 
For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He has established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Who can hear that? Verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob seek me in vain. No. I the Lord speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. And it is right to seek him only. Okay. You don't have to go through no faggot to get to the most high God. You go, you, you, you seek the most high God through his, you know, through his laws. And, you know, like he told us to seek him. Keeping his laws, statutes, his commandments. And, and seeking him, his face only. Nobody else. Don't go through nobody else to get to him. Isaiah 45 and verse 20. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image. And pray unto a God that cannot save. Jesus Christ cannot save. Why you keep mentioning him at the end of your prayers? He cannot save. Every time you look at these, these people, they keep saying in Jesus name. He cannot save. What? Why are you praying to him? Let me read verse 20 again. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together. Ye that are escaped of the nations. Have you gotten away from the nations? Gods. Because you have no knowledge. If you keep praying to the to the to the uh, false gods. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. OK, verse 21. Tell ye, bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient times? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no, no God else beside me. There is no God beside the Most High God. A just God. Yes, you are, Father. You are a just God and a Savior. You are our only Savior, the Savior of Israel. There is none beside me. There is no other Savior. The Most High God is Israel's only Savior. And I'm going to get one more verse and then we'll close out this study. And I hope it is encouraging to our people. I don't care if it's encouraging to uh to, to uh, Christians because th this has nothing to do with you Christians if you're not encouraged by this so what and nobody talking to you but I'm speaking to the children of Israel our people the true Israelites okay if you are a Jesus lover and you're going after Jesus then go ahead knock yourself out this is not for you okay Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 22 look unto me this is the most high God is saying this. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. The most high God is Israel's only savior. And with that, until we do our next study, I'm going to say to my people, the children of Israel, Shalom.